All right, all right, all right. What the hell's going on, everybody? We've got Nightmare down here typing F10N at the start of the game. I'm not sure if he's saying I should just quit Zerg's Imba, making fun of Sola, telling him he should quit. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe Sola was asking some tech advice before this, <laughs> the game started. We got Sola for Vitality. Nightmare in the bottom left. And this is, of course, the semi-finals. Uh, I believe it's the semi-finals anyway. Yeah, semi-finals of the... Um, the KFC week two. Uh, if you guys didn't see the stream yesterday, we cast the, or the video we put up yesterday uh, was like the Beyond Classic semi-final. Winner of that will be playing the winner of this match in the grand finals, um, which depending on what, how this goes, we'll put up either with this one today or tomorrow on the YouTube channel. And it should be interesting to see what happens. Should have screenshotted it. Would have loved to know what Solar said. Maybe we can just translate this, actually. What do you guys reckon? Maybe I should get my translations out. I mean, it's too much to translate. I think it's too much. Sorry, guys. I'm sure people in chat will do some translations of it and stuff, but so much chatter, and it's it's always very hard to translate that. All right, guys. We've got Hatch Gas Pool here. Nightmare was not able to block the expansion, so good on Solar for getting that down nice and early. Cybercore after Nexus. Should be one more probe. Second Gas goes down on 75 minerals right here. And then another probe will queue up down there on 50 minerals and a second pylon right after. Good play by Nightmare. Still trying to harass the, the minerals, but he's not really doing that amazing job. I think the best thing you can do is hang out here and alternate the mineral patches because it just kind of overloads the Zerg with their drones all kind of bugging out and getting thrown everywhere. But if you only harass one mineral patch, it just makes it a bit easier for the Zerg to handle. And you can see Solar did a really good job of just kind of microing his drones, making sure they stay on task. Very well done by our Zerg. Adept does get built here no chrono boost on that nightmare a very passive protoss in the opening stages until those oracles hit the field and in general you look at the chaos of hero and how he opens a lot of the time very different to nightmare nightmare follows a more european approach it's more about getting up to a really good work account three base saturation as efficiently as possible and making sure that he's not getting surprised by you know i guess he's played against dark enough so he's just trying to be safe against like silly ling floods Crazy attacks trying to cancel his third base, all that sort of jazz. Stargate coming in there. Okay, so he's chronoing probes a little bit here. Both next eye chronoing. Yeah, very economic opening. Now, he should be saving this next chrono for the first Oracle, or he's building a Void Ray. Now, the trick with the Void Ray is you want to go across the map, try to catch an Overlord, then come home and get this Overlord that's never going to escape because Overlords are very safe. So that's why he's most likely rallied this one forward. Adept Shade does come in. He's only got four Zerglings, but four Zerglings and two Queens and a bit of creep out front, more than enough to defend a single Adept. Second Gateway will go down in the wall off momentarily. Um, just because obviously about 3.30 is when Link Speed finishes. And if you don't have a wall off and Zerg has Link Speed, well, I hope your name's Hero because otherwise you're going to be very uncomfortable in the next minute or two of that game. Void Ray comes out, Oracle is behind, and he does decide, you know what, I don't see any exposed overlords on the other side. Let's just grab the safe kill, take that bad boy out, and then take that third Nexus behind it. Solar does hit a bit of a supply block here, but the third base will get him out of it. Starts a new overlord or two before continuing droning. Now, you don't really need Spore Crawlers if your opponent goes Void Ray, guys, first. You, you want to probably build a Spore about four minutes in the main and then defend your Natural and your third with Queens. Well, he, okay, he's going to keep his main defended with Queens. He's going to do the Spore and the Natural. It's just a slightly different way of doing it, but essentially the same thing at its essence, which is saying, well, your actual good mobile drone killing unit is so delayed, I don't need to worry about that very early on. I can just defend with Queens. And losing only a creep tumor so far, not a big deal. The Void Ray wants to deny him taking the fourth base if he leaves it there. I think diving into the main for one or two drones is always worth. You can see the shields are regenerating. He's going to stay down here. He doesn't want to risk that getting opened up because all it takes is a few seconds for a drone to open this path and he wants to deny that fourth base. Oracle comes in, Solar preemptively pulls drones, sends the queen, the queen over. And Nightmare is going late glaives. Oh my god, that's a very late glaives, guys. Starting at 440. He's going to hit a four gate glaive adept attack. This is a kind of late one. To be hitting off just four gateways is crazy. Void rate. I thought he'd click the drone there. Oh, nightmare. Hello, nightmare. Oh, God, nightmare. No, no, mate. Oh, my Lord. That's an expensive unit. Nightmare caught sleeping there. And he does lose his void ray. Oh, that's rough. Um,. The whole point of a Void Ray as well is, is Void Ray almost always goes into Glaive Adepts. So you really should be very wary of this. But Solar's gone for a late Roach Warrant, only starting this at five minutes. 
His Ling's kind of need to get forward and try to get some vision of what's going on. Some people will warp in a Stalker or two to really pretend they're playing a more normal build. These Adepts are coming forward. That Adept's going to get jumped on. Soul is happy to take the trade. This looks really suspicious. Soul should absolutely build Roaches off 60 drones here. He's building eight more Lings for now. An extra Overlord or two would be nice as well. He's building a lot of Zerglings. Not the right unit against Glaive Adepts. Roaches are where it's at, but Solar does not seem to have got the read. Obviously, easier for us to get that read. We were expecting it. So seeing a kind of empty third with just one or two Adepts looked a bit suspicious to me. But that's because I was I was primed to think it looked suspicious. Solar was not, and that's why he's only now building Roaches. He does have seven Queens and 24 Lings. I, I think he can defend this and, and definitely not die. The question is, will he take a lot of damage or not? And that's where the problem could arise. That shade. That damn shade. That's where the problems began. The shades do come in. They do get cancelled. Fourth base is looking a little exposed. How many adepts is that? That's quite a few. 13 adepts on the front line. But not really getting any direct damage. I don't know, guys. I'm kind of doubting. Like, I feel like Nightmare should have committed a lot more here against the guy who had no roaches. I guess getting a fourth base is something. Is it? Is it really worth such a big a commitment to adepts, though? The problem, because because now you have to be really ready for Solar to counterattack with a big three base Roach Ravager Bane, and <laughs> that's usually what you'd be expecting. What you're not expecting is a bloody Spire. Solar's Solar's ahead of the game here. I would not be expecting a Spire in this scenario. That's the last thing I'd be thinking about. And yeah, that's exactly what Solar's gone for. Oh, another cancel on the fourth. Okay, I'm actually liking this for Nightmare in terms of that. The problem is always the scouting. In this sort of game, where's his Oracle and his Observer? They're not really looking around the back line. If he found the Spire, I think this would be good for him. But without finding the Spire, look, Solar's, Solar's droned up a lot without a fourth base, which kind of sucks. Solar's got so much money in the bank, he needs to rebuild that hatchery. Ling's come in, he surrounds the Stalker. Blink is not quite done, but the Stalkers will push him back. Hatchery's still not built. Soul is floating an insane amount of minerals right now. I gotta, I gotta question this one. He rebuilds it just as the Adepts come back in. Roaches are there. Nice transfuse on that Roach, but it does get focused down. The Adepts are happy to take care of that hatchery and the drone. Solar's 12 Mutalisks have so much work to be doing because if he doesn't get big damage, we're gonna go to his... Uh, this is Nightmare's vision. Mutas are popping. Mutas are popping in vision right now. He's not looking. He's not looking. Mutalisks are leaving his vision. Mutalisks are leaving his vision. They just left his vision. He did not look at it. He did not look at it, guys. He's thinking about a fourth base. The Mutas just flew out to the left. They just flew out to the left. Oh, gosh. He has no idea. He has no idea about the Mutalisks. He's building Stalkers. He's thinking about a fourth base. He's building a cannon and a battery in the third, but a cannon and a battery in the main and the natural would do so much to slow down these Mutalisks, but he just doesn't have it. At least he's not moving out. The Stalkers are coming home right now, but oh, damn, they're far away. Stalkers are off to that right. His Stalkers just moved out, guys. Mutas coming in. They're getting a massive amount of damage. He's going to continue across the map for a few seconds before realizing, no, 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 I can't make that work. I've got to go home. The Colossus takes a fair bit of damage. Not sure about that choice there. I think probes are almost always the better value to target. Solar goes into the main. Changes his mind a few times. A uh, bit of arming, bit of arming with these Mutalisks. You want to be a little more decisive than that, Mr. Solar. Does lose a few more Mutalisks. That is two Mutas in total. 14 probes. Still a fantastic first wave. As the revelation comes down, the Roachling runs forward and does see no fourth base. So that is a Zerg who's finally getting his fourth and fifth base up. And he's playing Mass Muta. Oh, wow. This is a real problem that Solar lost the mining on these bases. He needs these gases mining. He needs those gases going up so that he can keep scaling up the muters. I still think he's way ahead. There's no armor upgrade for the Stalkers. They, they, they probably should go plus one armor here. A lot of people go plus two attack against Mutalisks. That's always a mistake, guys. Muters and Zerglings, you always want armor upgrades, whether you're a Zerg or a Protoss. If you're a Terran, you can go attack upgrades with your bio, of course. But uh, even if you're playing mech, you're better off actually going armor upgrades against these because... Lots of low damage, uh, you know, think of a muta, it does nine damage and then it bounces, does one third of that damage, the next bounce does another one third of the, of the third, so, you know, one ninth of the original damage. Same with Zerglings, very small damage, frequent attacks, every point of armor is essential, and you're going to be overkilling a lot whenever you're shooting small, fragile units like Mutalisks and Zerglings, so it's all about the armor upgrades. Stalker's getting picked off here, there's just not enough. There's just not enough. Where are the Stalkers, mate? There's 26 Stalkers on this map, but they're getting hammered. There's too many Stalkers on the right side. He needs more Stalkers over here. The cannon and the battery getting depowered is an absolute disaster. Solar just dives on top of those Mutalisks. And as I said earlier, 
the last thing you're expecting after this is mutalisks. When you're out there in their face with adept, saving money for mutalisks is usually the last thing on someone's mind, but Solo was ahead of the game. He said, yeah, I'm going to lose my fourth, but I'm going to I'm going to take care of you anyway. The Adepts and the Colossus doing what they can. The Roach is pushing back those Colossus. One of them does fall. The Muta count is up to 24. There's only 22 Stalkers. And the problem is with the Roachling on the ground as well, your Stalkers need to split up to defend. Roachling will back off for now. It looks like the Stalkers did come down. Let's do a unit lost count. 19 Stalkers for 16 Mutas. That's amazing for, for Zerg, because even though Mutalisks cost a little more than Stalkers, you're on 10 gas now. And once you hit 10 gas Mutalisk production, as long as you have at least 75 workers in total, you can just make a swarm of mutas. Anytime the Zerglings in the fight as well, that's going to be massive. Mutas go after the Colossus, because that allows the Zerglings to survive longer. Lings are amazing, especially with plus one melee against these Stalkers. Stalkers still only have plus one attack and Nightmare. I don't care how good your Blink Micro is, mate. Stalkers are very bad against this amount of Zerglings and Mutalisks on top of you. Solar swinging in like a truck and says, Silly Glaive Adept time and killing my fourth base three times. Who cares, mate? Three base surprise mutalisks. Get her done. All right, guys. That was a pretty nice game one, wasn't it, for Mr. Solar? Bit of a delayed Glaive Adept for Nightmare, and it just makes you... Like, there's part of me that's like, maybe he should have shoved in with the Adepts and done more damage. But I actually think the way he did it would have been great if he scouted very well. He kind of did, like, the safer option, denying the fourth, preserving the Adepts so he's got them to help defend a counterattack. He can always shade away to help defend any Zergling Swarm with Ravages. I just feel like the big problem he runs into there is is not seeing that spire in the back. I and mean, if his oracle was more active scooting around the back lines, it'd be a different story. I think he was maybe worried about a counterattack. I, I don't think he needed to be, though. Not with the depths in his opponent's face like that. So, you know, sometimes when you're worried about the Zerg attacking, you, you leave your oracle out kind of patrolling the middle to see the move out and be ready to shoot down Ravages. Not a, not a scary thing in that scenario. So definitely something that, you know, you've got to you got to uh, keep that scouting going. And uh, there's a lot of times as a player, you just you just don't think there's anything scary to scout for, so you just don't bother scouting. But a guy as good as Solar shows that he knows how to catch you off guard. And surprise Mutalisks, ever since like 2014 when he was a ZVP Pro League sniper, he was always very good at the Muta swap in this matchup. So I think Solar's always had a very deep understanding of is the power of Mutalisks when they surprise a Protoss player. And this is the thing I've run into speaking to a lot of um, fans of StarCraft who watch a lot of the European Zergs and their streams as well as talking to the European Zergs myself is there's a lot of a mindset of them if they want to find a very solid way to always win with no surprises. And I really feel like TVP and ZVP historically for, for most periods of StarCraft 2 have not been like that. Like... <laughs> If the Protoss kind of knows what's coming at all times, the Protoss usually should win. That's that's kind of just how the way it's been. If, if the Protoss can kind of know exactly when you're going to attack and just build their defenses at the right time and otherwise get to a good economic and tech position, they, they always hit a break point when they get like to a certain size of build up where they get to very powerful spots. But that's because they're cutting corners to get there because they know exactly what's going to happen. Whereas if they can't figure out exactly what's going to happen, they have to suddenly play a much more... Mm, an unrefined style, a style that isn't isn't kind of sharpened around rushing to a specific point as early or anything like that. And uh, it's it's really tough if uh, that's the case. Chat says, Livy B almost always goes Mutalisks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, she's, she's not a pro gamer, right? So <laughs> she's a very good player of StarCraft. But if someone knows she does that and they're playing her and they're not building Phoenix preemptively... And getting a second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon, they're they're selling themselves short because there is an obvious hard counter to the Mutalisk available, right? Um, now, to be fair, she's good with Muta Corruptor and the micro of that. A lot of Protoss players aren't as comfortable in that micro. So, to be fair, you can still always find ways to make things work, you know, to a certain skill level. But against the best players in the world, man, their micro is so good at so many different scenarios. Like, I remember games where I was playing someone like way better than me. I thought I got like a really good greedy start. I go open just a few mutalisks to force the Phoenix response. And then I've already gone up to like 85 drones, 12 gases, mass muta corruptor on the way. And by the time my muta corruptor starts trading, they've suddenly gone like Phoenix and Phoenix range off two seconds. But then they've also got Archons on the ground and a fourth base up and they've got cannon battery spread everywhere. And I'm like, oh, I actually can't trade because the, the Corruptors are always getting chased away by the Archons. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, you're actually just, you know, you're, you're matching me pace for pace. But uh, there's always options in StarCraft. There's ways to make things work, but you need to not be too far behind the curve. You know, StarCraft's a multifaceted 
multifaceted game and generally speaking if your opponents are at the top tier and you do the same thing every game it doesn't go very well for you there's a reason why Serral has varied his play up so much over the last few years there's a reason why rogue who is kind of the the great zerg for a year before Serral came into his own uh was so variable so many crazy all-ins mixed in with all sorts of other weird plays there's a reason why maru's proxy raxing every every one in three games Got to keep that variability there. Double Adept's getting surrounded by Solar, but only one of them goes down. I think this is a good trade for Nightmare. It's a very clean opening for Nightmare, and I, I prefer the Oracle instead of the Void Ray opening for sure here. Forge and Twilight are on the way as well. Plus one melee has already started. This Evo Chamber can be used as part of a wall-off if there was a Glaive Adept follow-up. Doesn't look like that's the case here for Nightmare, though. Nightmare's pausing his probing to build gateways. That's kind of like the Nightmare special of not the old-school Nightmare always cut probes to get his gateways down at crisp timings this is a very fast five gates i think he's expecting a roach walk seeing the evo chamber he should know now that this is upgraded zerglings and he should be hitting his probes incredibly hard adepts aren't really getting any worker damage the oracles do get three workers on the right side the adepts are going to grab just one drone before they do shade away and the oracles still have those lasers on so those zerglings do get pushed back this is pretty good damage 800 resources lost for zerg only 250 for protoss fourth base goes down for solar right now solar does not have a lair he does not have a roach horn but he's feeling confident nonetheless solar is down in workers he's still making tons of zerglings this is kind of like a 50 50 build to a certain extent stalkers are in the open that's a big mistake nightmare they should be sitting in the mineral line we've talked about this so much over the last few weeks about how stats always keeps his units in the pocket and pretty much every other protoss player just leaves them out there to get surrounded and it's such a sloppy play hero does it every game nightmare's been doing it a lot as well such a big opening solar getting two stalkers and a shield battery down great pick off stalkers are worth seven zerglings each remember every stalker you lose is so bad gets a probe snipe there as well with the focus fire he could even shift click a few more of these probes if solar really wants to he's trying to surround the adepts in the middle of the map the lings are desperate for damage right now man looks like that stalker does go down every stalker he kills is is really worth a lot of value that being said nightmare has a fourth base he's a little supply block but i think nightmare still comes out of this overall on top even though solar now has the worker advantage it's only by two his Hydrodon and Baneling Nest have just started, so he's going to play a Hydra Bane. And if we see Nightmare drop a Robo Bane and a second Robo right now, I don't think he can, like, I don't even think he can lose to Hydra Bane. If you start going double Robo Colossus right now, this is ridiculously bad for the Zerg. But that's not going to happen because he's only on five gases. Which means we're playing Gateway Man against Hydra Bane. Now, Gateway Man against Hydra Bane can work for the Protoss. You need to go mass blink, though. The Zealots are going to fall off pretty hard against the Banelings. Gotta keep this fourth base alive as well. Fourth base does have two adepts in position. I think it should be safe with some warp ins. Good stalker warp in. It's gonna block it, man. Yeah, with a bit of blink micro, he should be able to keep these units alive. At the same time, he's pushing the front, picking off a few overlords. Nightmare getting very aggressive. Stalkers blink away to keep themselves alive. These stalkers on the front are in trouble. He does try to recall, but that means he's got three stalkers he's left on the front. Those are gonna die because he's busy microing at home. Those stalkers, oh no! He's going to try and blink one out there, but so many Stalkers going down. Feels like Solar's just making chaos happen right now. He's kind of playing Dark style. He's like, well, I'm behind. Let's do some desperate stuff. Second Robo and Robo Bay do go down now, but only off five gas. He needs a sixth gas to support the double Robo Colossus style. Hydra Bane is now on the way out. Nightmare has lost a lot of units. He's behind in the units lost, despite starting so far ahead earlier. Hydras do take that out. Now, there's no Hydra uh, movement speed, only grooved spines we do need muscular augments as well it starts up that's only 70 seconds away 64 seconds actually that means there's no time to get colossus out before the hydra upgrades are here dude this is looking a little scary now for nightmare nightmare needs to not make any more stalkers as well if he can make archons and colossus and zealots and use the zealots to like run by and buy some time that'd be good but it feels like after all those ling trades that lead nightmare had has dissipated and now he's like oh yeah making some colossus will he even get the first two colossus out i'm not sure four bases are established fully with 78 workers a massive worker advantage for nightmare but it's not about having a worker advantage it's about surviving right now because you're building a much better army in the long run but right now we are getting shoved in by hydra bane solar is not going to give him any time to prepare and great decisiveness for solar Solar was on the back foot this whole early game, but Nightmare getting blindsided by Mutas in map one. In map two, it's just a quick Hydra Bane after the Lings cause enough chaos, bleed out a lot of his Stalkers, 
and remove his ability to pin the Zerg back with the Stalker aggression that they so love to do. The, uh, sorry guys, didn't mean to remove the overlay there. Two Colossus come in from the right side. They start cleaning up the Zerglings. If the Prism goes over there, he can juggle those Colossus, but the cannon's going to get blown up. The probes get blown up. And Nightmare has to tap out there. Both games unraveling so very quickly, and it all started there with uh, just a few sloppy setups. Let's go back and like look at the little details. Like What cost him this game? Because at this point, I think it was way ahead for him, right? I think it was really good position for him. Even though those Adepts didn't micro as well as they could, that's because he was focusing on the Oracles. This is a fantastic spot to find yourself, and he's got five gates as well, which you'd think with five gates going on six gates, you'd be incredibly safe here, right? Like, there shouldn't really be a chance for a Zerg to do any damage to you because it's such a safe style. This is a bummer, man. This is actually ridiculous. Oracle's over there as well. Um, I mean, it's, it's here, really. These Stalkers get left out, and he's supply blocked. Oh, he's supply blocked as well. So he was supply blocked, so he couldn't even warp in until these units die. So he's got to wait for the units to warp in. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is it. This is actually the exact time where everything fell apart. It's, look at this, he's at 83 supply. He doesn't realize for so long that he's supply blocked. He finally builds a pylon here. Um, after about five, 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 seven seconds supply block, which means so it's about 25, 30 seconds supply block. And then he's kind of like, ah, oh, damn. So, so he loses a battery, no cancel, loses two stalkers. He then loses another stalker uh, and a probe. And you think, okay, well, it's still okay. You can still stabilize. But then, then in the follow-up, he starts making mistakes as well because he, he wants to push with the stalkers. So he then is getting damage done here and it's the distraction of this. How many units did he actually lose? Because we know he loses a ton of stalkers on the other side of the map. You can see here, he loses the pylon, the probe, the adepts, his whole army gets recalled, and he lost like a bunch of stalkers on the other side as well. So this was just, and it slows down his second robo, his robo bay transition. Damn, 85 supply block and leaving stalkers in the open was a really nasty combo. Got him caught out bad. Unfortunate for Nightmare, he had a really smooth opening up to that point. All right, all right, all right. Well, that was an easy cleaving through of his opponent. Solar in the bottom left side of this map goes straight to the grand finals against Classic. And after a quick series like that, we definitely want to go straight to the finals all in one video because he's playing Classic. Classic looked pretty damn good in his PVT. How is his PVZ looking? And can it hold up against the Brickmaster? For those who don't know, Solar is, uh, you know, we call him the Brickmaster because he just kills Protoss players. A lot of Zergs are like, oh, I need a hive. Oh, I need to make Broodlords. Oh, I need to use all the spellcasters. Sola is like, uh, have you heard of the Ravager, the Roach, and the Zergling? People are like, what? And he just picks up a brick of Roaches, Ravages, and Zerglings compressed into a sort of cement-like substance, and then he smashes it into the Protoss's face and literally cracks their skull in, and it just turns into a gruesome, gruesome experience. He makes it look so simple, the way he dismantles Protoss. When things are going Solar's way, if he gets a read on what you're doing, he will just rip, he just smashes your head in. He doesn't, it looks almost silly sometimes with how simple he makes it look. Classic though is a very different creature to Nightmare. He can also be quite defensive as a Protoss, but where Nightmare wants to kind of explode in the mid game and sometimes leaves a few openings, which obviously got exploited. Classic is sometimes willing to just play really brutal timing attacks, weird cannon rushes, or to go Omega Turtle, scout like a god, and, and you know not get surprised by things like Mutalisks, at least if if he's on point. We'll see how things go. Yeah. Some people out there are sharpening their samurai sword. Some people out there going into the marketplace doing all their sword tricks like in um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Indiana Jones. But uh, Solar's, Solar is, uh, is, is Mr. Harrison Ford as he just pulls his gun out and just shoots the guy and just like shrugs his shoulders. He's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have brought a sword to a gunfight, man. In this in his case, though, Solar, it's, you shouldn't have brought a sword to a brick fight. It's, it's wasn't that scene? Wasn't there like a story that scene was like improvised or something? They they like changed it. I think there was like a good one. Good classic film. It's so weird watching old movies like that. A different age of cinema. I do love that. Like the modern action movie these days is just everyone trying to copy like John Wick. At this point. I'm just like, we just need guy revenge. And I guess to some extent, John Wick is like, I guess like Taken, maybe we could give for inspiring the like modern popularity of, of very simple revenge action movies. Was Taken, the, I feel like Taken was the one that kind of like set off that, that chain where you've got like John Wick and then you've got 
all these other movies like Nobody and uh, was it the John Wick producer did that Finnish Sisu <laughs> film that I've I've been memeing about a fair bit. The uh, the actual life story of Sarah's grandpa um, back in 1945. Yep. <laughs> uh, Stargate is finished up. Oracle's on the way as well. speed's coming in so third hatchery is about halfway done very standard opening for solar no big deviations you can tell he's going for queen very early so he's going to delay the spores this is always really good because if your opponent is doing a sneaky thing and pretending it's a stargate but actually going twilight by the time you realize there's no oracle you haven't actually built a spore or you at least haven't finished oh, wait why is he putting a spore oh he wants to he wants to rally drones to his third straight that's a very early spore crawler guys for a player who's rushing five queens this is overly safe for solar in my opinion on the other hand hey better overly safe than sorry i guess you don't want to don't want to be taking that damage oracle goes down the right side lings are on the watchtower third base man he's already putting a seventh queen guys i've never seen someone be this safe against oracles i know classic's famous for his oracle control recently he's been very good with it but damn no chance has been taken by solar solar even does a nice counter attack at lings gets himself in a depth the oracle keeps going back and forwards Okay, that Adept gets in a good position. The Oracle should protect it. And one Ling does derp around. Stalker kills the Overlord on the high ground. Oracle activates its laser to defend the natural and then immediately turns that laser off. Uh, Solar doesn't really have a worker advantage because he's already building a second Spore and seven Queens. This is a massive overcommitment to Antia. Now, the reason I want, I want you to point this out, look at how much idle lava he has with not much minerals to spend it. That's because he's building seven Queens and two Spores so early. He's spending so much minerals on Antia, he doesn't have enough to actually spend all of his lava until now. And he is building a lot of Zergings, which he needs against these Adepts. As long as he takes no drone losses, this is okay, but I feel like inevitably those Oracles should be finding at least a few drones. That being said, Classic already lost the shields on this Oracle, and that's coming in very dangerous. Coming in hot here. The Spore's not ready, though. Ooh, the Queen's are a little out of position. And, oh, oh, that's not worth losing an Oracle for two drones. That was pretty rough. All right, great defense by Solar. Solar's on point. Classic's opening is not looking great so far. He's going to warp in a few stalkers. He doesn't warp them into the choke point, though. Yet again, lazy warp-ins, guys. I'm going to keep hum ha harping on about that because it's a, a really fundamental thing that any Protoss player who learnt the game uh, by studying the best players in early Legacy kind of memorized these certain rules. And players have gotten a bit lazy with it other than Stats and Showtime. <laughs> stats and Showtime, the two, the two guys who are, like, obsessively OCD about these rules. And I'm like, man... I don't know why the rest of us aren't doing it. We've got to remember these. The number of games I've lost from leaving me stalkers in the opening. You can see Classic's on point now. He's very aware of this. It was just a, a momentary lapse with those stalkers. Anyways, does come in, gets three drones. Eh, he's deep in the red, though. So as much as he gets a few drone kills, he does take a fair bit of damage. Oh my, plus one range. Plus one range. That is big, guys. Why is it big? It tells us he's rushing lurkers, I believe. He could go for like a big plus one roach queen push at max, but I'm pretty sure he's going to either go Nidus Worm Swarmost or rush lurkers because blink is standard for classic. I think lurkers is the best play. And with a quick infestation pit, that's a huge sign that that is indeed what he's going for. Uh, classic's going to go for a nice quick fourth base at 615. He's already got a second forge, a robo and a Templar archives. Okay, so classic seems to have a read that Solar's playing a very long game, which he is. My question is, how does Classic know this? Because if you're going Robo, Double Forge, and Templar Archives, and a fourth base at six minutes, that feels greedy. But hats off to him. He's already on six gateways, so he's got a lot of production. Yeah, he's only got a few Stalkers so far, but he can very quickly mass units if he needs to. And he's got Stalkers split on both bases. Double Hydroden goes down. I think that's a mistake, guys. I think one of those is meant to be a Lurkoden, and a Hive should be going down right about now. Overlord Speed goes down, he cancels the Hydroden and does make the Lurkoden as I predicted. I was like, there's no way you want double Hydroden when you're rushing Hive here. You've got plenty of time to get those Hydro upgrades if you want them. Now you might be wondering, why has he forgotten the Hydro upgrades? He's not, guys. You don't have enough gas to go Lurkers, Lurker upgrades, Vipers, Range upgrades, and Hydro upgrades. You basically play Roaches into Lurkers and potentially Vipers. And you'll add the Hydra upgrades a little bit later, but you want to get the Lurkers and the Lurker upgrades out as fast as possible because that's the real power spike. Adding a few Hydras to your army doesn't really do much unless you're defending an attack right then and there or doing an attack of your own High Templar in the open. Oh god, oh god, a classic. He does have to morph Archons. Oh no, he loses two High Templar. That was a good move, man. 
Stalkers are going to body block the roaches though, which is actually quite nice. I like this from Classic. He's like, he wants that Ravager so bad. He's not going to get it though. Is he? No. Nah. But he'll catch the five roaches, so it's not too bad of a trade. Losing a High Templar that gathering energy. He still hasn't rebuilt them. Guys, he still hasn't rebuilt his High Templar. Classic! It's the most important thing when you lose your High Templar is to rebuild them. Okay, he's making two now, but... Dude, if he doesn't have much Psy Storm when the, the push comes, that could be scary. Now, to be fair, Lurkers don't care that much about Psy Storm, but it's still, it's your only splash damage. It's going to clear the Lings, it'll damage the Roaches, and it'll tickle away the Lurkers a bit as well. So having, usually you want four or five High Templar here, at least. If you're not going to, you know, if you're going to bother with Storm, you want to gather up that energy. He's got walls of cannons and batteries coming up on the fourth. Third base looking reasonably well established. He's going to have to push out towards the Watchtower soon as well as Classic. The double Robo pumping Immortals. Um, and he has got four High Templar now gathering energy. Sixth base on the way. So right now it's a uh, nine gas for the Zerg, Solar. He's got that Lurker range. His Hydra upgrades are starting to come in. Notice how Solar's going to 87 workers. It's because he's building spines. Very common to build spines. Often you want to tuck these kind of behind the mineral line where Zealots can't surround them very easily and they might bug out. Like you put a spine there, Zealots are going to get stuck in this choke point naturally. So we'll see those added in because this Protoss always ends up with an abundance of minerals, but Zealots are pretty bad in frontal fights. So the Zealots are going to be running around for counterattacks. And if you don't have any spines ready, they can really buy a lot of time. They can pull the Zerg around. And if the Zerg is getting distracted by Zealots, it allows Protoss to get to that late game very powerfully. The Stalker blocking the army. Stalker's blocking the army. Classic. That Stalker was on a hold position there. That was... You do not want your Stalker on hold position blocking your own army. Careful, mate. Changeling gets picked off. Lurkers are there. They've got Lurker range. Spire starts up in a second either. I love this play. I love this play. Solar realizes he's not going to be able to push through with Lurkers against a guy who's this prepared on a Mortal Storm. So he's already thinking about going Corruptors and or Broodlords. Lurkers are going to shove forward. Oh, this is a crazy move. This is a crazy move for Solar right now. Lurkers trying to shove forward. Second Evo coming in is big. If he's going to play a longer game, I'd like to see potentially a third Evo chamber because you are going to have to swap to melee focused upgrades. Oh, Lurkers getting jumped on. Oh, this is painful. Adapter Talons wasn't quite ready. Two Lurkers go down. A third Cocoon and a fourth Cocoon goes down as well. A couple Queens falling. Yeah, a few Stalkers go down. These Storms are getting value, mate. Big, big value. Roaches come in from the left. They can't do anything against seven Immortals. Plus two Ground Armors on the way. Plus two Ground Attacks already done for Protoss. So massive upgrade advantage for Protoss is coming in. And he's building Tempests. Oh, plus three attack Tempests, plus one air weapons. He's trying to hold back the Lurkers right now. Immortals are good versus the Lurkers, but he's going to need a little bit more Storm Energy. The Oracle, still alive from the early game, providing the best possible detection available. Not much support for those Lurkers. The Immortals run through, grab two or three Lurker kills, and Classic should be pulling back. Because what you want to do is you want to pull back and get more Storm Energy, get your barriers back on the Immortals, get more shields. Every skirmish like that, where your Immortals get damaged but don't die, you get insane value. And we can already see a 2,000 resource advantage in the units lost for Classic, our Protoss player. One of the Immortals goes down in red, though. I think that was a bit too quick to re-engage. And it might cost him. Oh, no. Classic getting all of his Immortals surrounded. Yeah, it was definitely way too soon to be pushing back in there. And that is such an unfortunate way to lose that expensive core of your army. Oh, no. Classic down in the dumps now. What's he got, guys? He's got two Tempests. A couple of High Templar with Storms and, and, and a few other units. And the Tempest can start picking away, but he needs those on a different control group to the rest of his army. You can see Classic now doing that. They're going to start taking out these Hydras, but they don't even have enough to one-shot them. Good Storm! Oh, great Storm on the Hydras! The Hydras kind of get wrecked there. That was actually really nicely done. Zealot counterattack on the right side. Prism does come in. That Prism needs to move, though. Otherwise, it's going to go down, picking up the Zealots. But it's like, oh god, i got to get out of here! The Prism does pull away. He's going to rotate down to the right, try to get into the main base to distract and buy time. Those Tempests saving Classic's bacon. Cla the Tempest plus the Storms were really good, as well as the Wall of Cannons on the left. Classic doesn't have a fifth, though. He needs to get a fifth base up on this right side. Try to move out to a sixth on the gold. He's rebooting his Immortal Count. He's got six High Templar with Storm. And we'll see how well he can hang on. Corruptors are coming, but this is not a greatest buy a Corruptor play. It's just a few Corruptors to deal with the Tempests. Single Zealot gets dropped. Zerglings will take care of it. Two more Zealots are going to unload in the main base. Spore and Queen are ready for it. Not a bad thing. The way Classic has just shift-clicked that. And the Corruptors will say, good night, sweet prince. Prism does see that it's not a great Aspire, at least. Not sure if Classic registered that. It's just a regular Aspire. So he doesn't have to worry about Broodlords just yet. Solar has accidentally built Rando Calrissian, the Swarm Host guys. He's also rallying that forwards. I think it's just part of his army group, unfortunately. The accidental Swarm Host misclick. One of the most famous things in StarCraft 2. A very popular misclick. 
Plus three range, plus one carapace is on the way. Plus one melee already got done. He's going to go for a swarm. It's a big old YOLO. Corruptors find the Tempest in the open ground. This is a very good catch. The storms are doing good damage so far. The Hydra is taking a lot of storms. He's got to be careful. I think those Hydras need to pull back, and indeed they do. The Corruptors stopped chasing. Big mistake there. Those Corruptors probably could have grabbed another Tempest or two if they kept chasing. Also, the Overseer not far enough forward to catch that Observer as Classic sneaks a base in the top left. Zealots do come in on that right side. That spine crawler was in a bit of an awkward position to, to chunk out and, and clump up the Zealots a little bit. But it is what it is. A bunch more Lurker Cocoons caught on the front lines. Tempest picking off these units. And, oh, he's going to go for the Tempest. He's got to be careful. He gets one of them. Now the Tempest taking big damage there. It does go down. Oh, my God. The High Templar. The High Templar. The Lurkers do big damage, but they aren't quite enough to take it out. All the Tempests go down, which means the Corruptors can fly past and go for a PP assault. They do force a big Stalker Warp into the main, which is in in of itself. That's great. Stalkers aren't good versus Lurkers. So forcing Stalker Warpins is really fantastic. Mama is in the open. But with a battery overcharge and a cannon nearby. Oh, the mama, mama's exposed. Mama's going to go down. Corruptors find mama. Meanwhile, Lurkers trying to shove the front. The Lurkers, though, getting caught as they morph. Lings are going to do nothing against this Archon Zealot. The Lurkers are caught in the open. The Immortal Archon absolutely shredding. Solar getting a bit too cocky. Morphing all of his Lurkers on the front. And he just got absolutely cleansed. Oh, my lord. His Corruptors come back looking for more Tempest, but with Stalkers on their tail, that ain't gonna happen. The Corruptor count's now too low as well. But with nine Immortals, five Archons, ooh. Classic threw away a bit of an army earlier in this game, but he was doing fantastic at building up the correct units that he needed. The Tempest will be going down to the Corruptors, but so many Corruptors going down, and there is nothing to stop this wave of Immortal Archon. Now, I was watching Mama a little bit there, but that is gonna be GG from Solar. I gotta show you guys this fight on that right side, because it really felt like, I guess, Solar just went a bit too deep there. As the Corruptors fly past, he tries to morph a ton of Lurkers on the front. His army's not that big. I like that he pulls back. Problem, where's the Overseer? I think he lost the Overseer there, guys, which means this Observer sees... If he killed this Observer, there's literally nothing Classic could do here, guys. Nothing. And the fact that he ran so far forward... And his army sucks, guys. Let's be honest, that's six Lurkers... And he's morphing like 10 more Lurkers, which is like 12 more Lurkers. But he's got nothing else but Lings. What are, you, what are plus one melee Lings going to do against this? They're just going to disappear to the Archon. So he doesn't really have anything to tank for the Lurkers. To be fair, what tanks for you against a mortal Archon? Nothing except more Lurkers or Broodlords is what you need to really deal with this army. Maybe some Fungals. But this was such a crucial moment because if he doesn't have that Observer, um, or if he just kind of lets all the Lurkers finish and get sieged up together... It's a very different scenario, but instead he kind of forces the front lurkers to pull back, kills half of them. Half of these lurkers are still morphing and struggling to find space to burrow. And that was just such a perfect move out timing where Rosola thought, I've got you pinned on the defensive. I'm going to morph lurkers and, and kind of really put you in the grave. And it actually backfired hardcore and Classic took advantage. That was a really good game one from Classic. All right, all right, all right. What the hell is going on, everybody? Game two, Classic in the top right, Sola in the bottom left. Classic. Going a bit too far forward on that watchtower and getting swarmed was definitely a slight mistake for him. you got to really manage... When you're in a protracted engagement in the middle of the map like that, you got to make sure you don't use up all your size storms and be a bit low on barriers and shields and, and kind of get caught by the swarm. Because we sometimes, as Protoss players, we, we kind of start thinking of like, oh, Lings and Hydras are bad, useless units. But it's like, dude, if you don't have a lot of storms or Archons and support units and they just surround you, like, yeah, things are going to go bad very quickly and Immortals are kind of useless versus those units, right? So... That put him in a dangerous spot. Despite that, he did everything very well afterwards. Um, someone in Twitch chat was saying, why, you know, Solar, I think, after winning the first fight against that army, should have moved up the ramp to the left and tried to cut off the fourth base and siege into that instead. And I 100% agree. I think Solar's first big shove up the ramp into the third, eating big storms and tempest shots was unnecessary. I think he should have moved left and he could have done a lot more damage. So I think, I think you guys are right there. Classic left an opening. Solar wasn't quite able to capitalize. And then... At the end, that one Observer, I don't think if, if Classic didn't have the vision, I don't think he jumps down on top of that army. And if all those Lurkers finish morphing, we're in a pretty even game. Cla you know, Solar's on five, six bases. Classic's only on four. Classic, though, has a very efficient Protoss army, so he makes up for that base count. And he was sneaking a fifth in the top left side. But it's, uh, it's always funny to see how the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Because... You see, oh, he's only got six Lurkers here. Twelve more morphing on the front line. Quick, let's A-move that with my Immortal Arc on and get myself a crushing victory. Classic's going to go Glaive Adept this game, potentially. Quick Twilight Council. Usually Glaive Adept, occasionally a Dark Templar opening. 
I was really good at South Park vs. Simpsons in StarCraft 1. What? Is it a custom map? South Park vs. Simpsons? Uh, use map settings, old custom game days. Probes are getting built air. Classic did skip a tiny bit of probe production on that base. Uh, I never played the StarCraft 1 custom maps. Played a lot of the WarCraft 3 custom maps. StarCraft 1 ones were... I guess not really a little before my time. I just didn't um, get a chance to do it. Looks like, oh, Anki was lagging and had to drop out there, guys. Anki, get out. Depth Shade does get taken out. Robo's on the way, extra gateways. This looks like a Glaive Adept. Should be starting Glaives about now. Classic forgot his upgrade. Okay, he does start it now. A few seconds later than he could have, but I don't think that'll affect the timing because it, it is a reasonably fast upgrade. You can always chrono boost it as well. It's a minute, uh, a minute 40 to upgrade. So that'll be done with one or two chronos by about five minutes. Eh, maybe a little before then, maybe, maybe 440, 430. Stalker patrolling here. Looks like he's planning to take that base on the right side. That's interesting that he's opening up this mineral patch. People normally open up the far left, but he's opening it up there. Hmm. Sergling's going to start breaking those rocks. Roachhorn goes down as well as the second gas. Hmm, pretty quick Roachhorn second gas. He, he seems to be aware of what's going on. That Overlord could have ran away, by the way. If you see the Stalker there, you can just run in this direction, and he can't see you leave the pillar because it, it's directionally sight blocked. So as long as you leave down to the left, you see how this area is in fog, but here isn't, because there is not blocked by the pillar. So I think that Overlord probably should have ran away, and it could have tried to make it back down to this area, maybe escape for good. But as it is, Solar will lose that. All right. Is he going to move the Stalker over there? He could. He could move the Stalker there to keep those rocks alive, but looks like he might just go for the front base. Adepts are moving out. There's six of them so far. Oh, he's going to go 10 Adepts forward, and then he's just going to warp four Adepts into the main base. Oh, that's a different way of doing it. That's cute. Five roaches on the way, as well as lots of Zerglings behind it. 39 workers only for Solar. Solar trying to play exceptionally safe here. Observer comes in, as well as a third and fourth gas. So Classic got a bit of a macro follow-up, a very tech-heavy follow-up behind this planned. Adept shading forwards. I think they'll cancel that and just go for the third base. Oh, that, that drone caught out in the open does go down. Four Adepts inside the main. He's going to shade into that main mineral line. Plenty of Zerglings there, though. So I think these Adepts in the main should cancel. He does cancel those. Adepts on the third base trying to kill the hatchery. There's a lot of Roach Queen, though. It's going to be interesting to see how he makes this work. Adept drop goes around the backside. These Adepts in the in the back of the third. He loses two of them already. Oh, it's a good hold so far by Solar. All depends what this Shade manages to achieve. Lings do jump on top for a pretty good surround. Four Roaches on top of it as well. But there goes the Adept warping in the main. This, this base needs to get, get pulled. Pulls the drones away. He's already lost two or three drones. There we go. Roaches and Lings are on top, but... As these Adepts start to bleed out, Classic, is he committing too much? He's building Immortals behind this. He's only on two base, remember, he does not have a third. If Solar can shut this down and get back in control of his worker lines, maybe he can come out on top. The Adepts starting to fall here. He does focus a few drones before picking up. Saves two Adepts, seven workers going down in total. But it's seven workers off a player who was only on 38, 39 drones to begin with. That is a 12 worker advantage. Even on just two bases, this is a significant edge for Classic. The Lings for Solar, aware of the fact that Classic's going to try to expand, should be trying to deny that. But of course, right now, he's just trying to shut down that Warp Prism. He's looking to wait for the Nexus to potentially go down. He runs in now. Seeing that army come out, looks like that third base will get protected. Another three drones go down. That is massive. Solar's back to building workers, but it's going to take him a while to recover. He's got three or four queens out. He's got a Spore in the main as well. His Lings at the front spot the third base going up. And seeing Immortals, Sentries, a third Immortal, two more Gateways, which will, of course, bring it up to six Gates. That's incredibly tough for a Solo who is simply trying to get back to even. Now, he's making Ravages right now. It looks like he's planning his own attack. Attacking, I don't think, can possibly work against this. I think, I think defending is good. I think if he goes to 45, maybe 48 drones, and then waits for Classic to attack him, like 50 drones, maybe, then Massing Ravageling might work, but Solar is going all in. Solar, remember, he's the master of the brick. Roaches, Ravages, and Zergans. Seeing a mortal sentry, there is no way you're breaking that offensively, though. And and not... He doesn't have many drones on the third. He loses a drone there. Adept does go down. Problem is, I think Classic, seeing so few drones on the third, is like, dude, my third's almost done. I can just probe up here. I think he's realizing, like, I can probe, let's make a forge. 
I don't need to attack with a model sentry. These units scale. I'll even do a hallucination to check what's going on. Meanwhile, Solar is completely all in. This hallucination, when it sees his army, it spells disaster. Let's go to Classic's vision. This is Classic's camera view right now. He's going to look at that hallucination. Giant army moving out. He sees a giant... He just saw a pack of Roach Ravager move forward. I don't know if he was watching or not. He's going to make more batteries. He's watching. He knows exactly what's happening. Mass Ravagerling all in, coming through the middle of the map. He should be warping in nothing but Adepts. Adepts wreck Zerglings. He's already got a good immortal count. He's got a good force field count. Uh, Adepts and sentries are, are what he's doing. I like that he's pre-spreading as well. Pre-spreading is really important. No battery in the natural, no cannons, just batteries, immortal sentries. Force field's doing a pretty good job to hold off the front line. And of course, those force fields are forcing those biles to be used. Battery overcharge on that left side, healing up these units really nicely. The lings are getting shredded out. Good dodges on the biles. Only one sentry getting hit there. The, the lings are gone. It's just ravages now. That immortal does take a few biles on the left side, but the battery overcharge is too good. And solar, a little bit too all in there. Felt like he was too far behind and he had to go for a very simple plan. The problem is he had no way of hiding that plan. And that is why, like I said, I think he needed to drone a bit harder there and then hope that Classic attacked into him. A defensive all-in, I think, would have been a slightly higher chance rather than just the straight-up obvious smack the brick into the face all-in. Classic shuts it down. Excellent Glaive Adept opening and fantastic scouting and defense afterwards. Well, up to zero now. Damn, Classic's on a tear. Solar cleaved through Nightmare like he was nothing, but Classic is showing he's made of sterner stuff. This is where Solar needs to knuckle down and figure out how to change gears a little bit. And that last game, I do think he maybe could have recovered, but it's just very tough to defend a well-executed Glaive Adept timing like that, especially with such a Zergling heavy defense. The more roaches you have, the, the, the kind of more efficient you can kind of be against it. Lings are very good at stopping the fastest Adept timings, which is why you see a lot of this kind of hybrid Roachling Queen response for Zergs. The problem it runs into is as they do a slower, more efficient, but more consistent pressure in multiple mineral lines, those lings end up taking really bad fights. And uh, even though he limited his drone losses, his economy to start with was not that great. Now, Solar is getting a quick hatchery up. Classic just doing a very safe gate scout. Nothing too crazy here. Will Pig ever grow a beard? Uh, when I was a teenager, I came across a uh, documentary about puberty uh, called Beavis and Butthead. And um, I saw in one episode where they decided that chicks dig guys with beards. So they decided to chop off uh, hair from various parts of their body and uh, glue it on their face. Um, and, uh, and then try to talk to girls at the local shopping mall. Um, ever since that day, I uh, then when I did start actually, you know, getting facial hair growth myself, I noticed that um, it kind of looked the same as the Beavis and Butthead hair that they'd glued on their face. It looked like I, I literally was like a child who'd glued some hair scraps on my face and i was like yeah that's not a good look let's not do that who knows I, it, it's a little thicker these days it still looks patchy like a mangy dog um not the best look so if i do ever want to go undercover as a bit of a vagrant you know maybe infiltrate the um uh, maybe i'll become like one of those people who does those 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 videos where i'm like i'm going into the the druggy you know neighborhood where people inject things into their face and weird crazy stuff happens if i start maybe i'll pivot to that instead of doing esports content then i i might grow a beard because it might make me fit in then but other than that i'm it's a stylistic choice to not look like beavis and butthead in that episode guys i um i've decided not a good look twilight council yet again wow okay Classic. Do we? I think I'd probably go DTs this time. Third hatchery's on the way. Stalker's there. Okay, so keep your eyes on this. He's pulled off gas. Uh, it's a Glaive Adept again. I think he might be hitting a really sharp, fast Glaive Adept timing. Mm, no, probably not. He's chronoing his, he's chronoing his probes a lot. Oh, oh, do you guys think he does the third, the third, the quick third base? He might do the quick third base this time. You know, you just did a ton of damage with a very aggressive version. A, a real simple thing here is, okay, you've conditioned Solar to be like worried about your really aggressive Glaive Adepts. Do one that's a lighter Adept pressure and take a quick third behind it would be a good way to mix it up. And uh, so far, it looks like a pretty similar build order. Four gates. He's paused probes here. Starts Glaives and then he'll resume probing. There we go. So a little gap in the probes there, even though he did some chronos earlier. Overall, still a very economic version of it. And Lair! 
Whoa, guys, Solar. He's going old school. This is the cham response. No link speed. No link speed. He's going to go, go lair so that he has Overseer in case it, if it is DT, his Overseer shuts that down. He's just going to go triple gas roaches and he'll wall off his base as well, most likely with Evo Chambers. Um, as long as you, th with this version, you don't use Zerglings at all. Remember I was talking about how Zerglings are inefficient against Glaive Adepts? This response is like one of the most optimized to shut down the Adepts in, in one, lo one location. But if... If Classic can like have Adepts in the third, Adepts in the natural, and a Prism dropping in the main, you do lack mobility, right, with the Roaches. So that's why that's why I'm expecting he might need to use a wall off. He's also played Greedier, 44 drones, and he's done that because he's only got four queens and he skipped link speed. This is a very optimized response for Solar. I don't know if I agree with the Evo Chamber this early, and it looks like there is an attempt for a fast third. Slow Zergling comes in for the scout. That fast third I was talking about, he wanted to go for it behind this early Adept pressure, but he's going to have to back away from it for now. Droning! Dude, Solar's playing way too greedy. Solar is playing way too greedy. 44 drones is already so greedy, but he's building Evo Chambers and more workers. I think he might have canceled those drones, actually. Uh, extra Evo Chamber to wall off. Roaches and Queens can defend this. I mean, it's a good setup. You know what? Maybe it's perfect. Maybe. No third base able to go down. That slow Zergling blocking the third is kind of hilarious. Immortal is here. Roach speed has started. I don't think you want to do an Immortal Adept timing, though, against a guy who's already got Roach Speed this early. Oh, this is what I was talking about. You lack mobility. Adepts in the main can be a real problem for you. He does cancel the Evo Chamber to let some Roaches back in, but you might let the Adepts in at the same time unless they just stand there. Oh, no, they're going to get in. They're going to get in. The Adepts do get in. They take out the drone in the wall off, but it does mean he's kind of surrounded by these Roaches. A lot of drones are going down. you got to run your drones. Because your Roaches aren't as fast as the Lings, you need to do a lot more running of workers away. Otherwise, the Adepts will get big value. Oh, he pro maybe he should have trapped the Adepts in there as well. Dude, Solar, this is a really clever build, but you can tell he's lacking practice on it. I don't think he's executed this as cleanly as he could have. He needed those Queens to already be hitting the Prism the moment it floated into his main, but he just wasn't watching it. The Zergling is still denying that third base for now. Looks like the Stalker will come over and kill it. Adepts doing big damage on the third base. There is an Observer seeing absolutely everything with where the Roaches are moving. The Adepts are going to rotate to the north, take out one more drone on the Disengage as well, and Classic cancels the Shade, does start turning to fight the Roaches. Maybe not the best play. Those Adepts should probably run away, but he's kind of winning just because of the numbers advantage. Queens do chase the Prism out of the main. 17 total workers have gone down. Uh, Queen does fall. These Adepts are having a bloody party right now. Any drone they find is big value. It's big Adept right now coming in, man. Trying to do what they can. That Prism is still very vulnerable. The Prism just needs to get out. As long as these Adepts shift click some drones, it's super worth. Prism does go down. A little bit sloppy there for Classic, but so much economic damage, and he's got a third base up behind it. Is it worth it? Look at the worker count. No, Solar's in a good spot. Solar's in a good spot. Solar's, Solar's up nine workers, despite all that chaos. Units loss trading is actually in favor of Solar. The, the efficiency of the roaches against the Adepts. But he's got to watch out for the sentries. Careful, Solar. Careful, mate. Get out of there. Run, 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 run. Not against the mortal sentry. Not with just roaches, man. Good force fields. He's going to lose four or five roaches there. It's not the end of the world, but oh, the two Adepts that hit him from earlier. That's a real bummer. He's got no units at home. He's building nothing but drones here. He has to Evo Chamber wall off and probably try to fight with the drones as well. I think he should try to fight. I know that sounds terrible, but yeah. Okay, Roaches finally get back. These two Adepts just did so much damage, man. That was so worth it. Not only four drones, but massive amounts of mining time. Oh, and he's going to grab one more. Insult to injury there. Yowchies. Four gateways are up. A few more transforming. So he's going to go up to like seven gate blink and his forge just now starting. Solar's miles ahead. I think Solar should have this game pretty well wrapped up, I would say, unless the Sentry Immortal push can catch him. He doesn't have... He's got a lot of gas. Wait, what's his map vision like? He should see this, right? This Zergling, he needs to just morph a ton of Ravagers. He's morphing Ravagers. He knows. He knows about the Sentry push. Mass Roach Ravager. Solar's got a massive work advantage. This is a kind of weird push because there is good three Immortals plus Force Fields, and he doesn't have any Ling option, which he doesn't want Lings anyway against the Depths. He needs nothing but Roach Ravager and Overlords. He's a little supply blocked right now, though, is Solar. He does need to build a couple more of those. Roach is trying to split up. There's no way these Adepts are going to do anything, but they pull him back, which means Force Fields on the ramp could be big. Watch out for the Force Fields. Bile's trying to land here. Solar might have to buy a bit more time. He may 
may need to pull drones in. Force fields trapping the Ravagers. That's a massive force field wave. These Ravagers need to buy time. You can't be losing the Ravagers right now. But look at that. They're trapped. All these roaches. These force fields are actually brutal. The Adepts forced him to pull back, even though Classic had no intention of ever letting that shade finish. And he gets himself an insane forward position. Solar trying to build 20 roaches right now. That supply block hurt him so much that the money is now coming in. If he, if he delayed this fight by 30 seconds, Solar crushes this, but he wasn't able to. And there's still three immortals and roaches trickling into that are not going to be enough. Classic twists off, just like his clan tag says, he twists off Solar's defense, his defense, and, uh, and just throws it on the ground, man. Oh my gosh. So, so... I really thought Solar had this, but like, because he's so far ahead in the economy, but army supply is actually very scary. The reason why I didn't rate this is Adepts are not good units versus Roaches, guys. These Adepts are not good units versus Roaches. However, the Sentry Immortal is. And as long as the Adepts just buffer and just add something to this army, it's actually okay. And it turns out Solar getting supply blocked and just being a bit too on the back foot from all that Adept pressure, those, those two Adepts especially really delaying him, if he, has, if he is able to intercept this army and start forcing the force fields out here and here and then do a fighting retreat, that's how you have to fight this. But Solar was still in the mindset of, oh no, I got to follow the Adepts. That's not the real threat. If, if he's at the front fighting and the Adepts shade in, he'll lose some drones, but he can run the drones away and he won't lose the game. You got to intercept the Immortal Sentry and make them use their force fields up out here. But look how deep Classic got before he had to drop any force fields. And at this point, Solar should already be pulling back. The problem is, if he pulls back, he gives up these ramps, which are really easy force field locations. But because he doesn't do that, and he spreads his biles across the army, which, sure, they do some damage, but now he doesn't have any biles to break these force fields. He should have been pulling his drones in here as well. He could have lost 25 drones, still been fine, because he's on four hatcheries. You know, he could have lost a lot of workers and been okay. They're not going to do well versus the Adepts, though, which is, of course, why a drone pull is not very attractive. But uh, damn, man, just hats off to Classic for sensing that he could push right now. A little follow-up Immortal Sentry push. This is the push that he didn't choose to do on Crimson Court, but he decided, nah, I got to do it on this map, and he was absolutely right. GG, well played. Classic with a 3-0 crushing, crushing victory in this finals.